Hello guys, girls and other pearls and welcome to a new video. I've been gone for a while, mainly because of school and mental reasons. I also made some sodium cyanide. Well, if that isn't a good combination, I don't know. I'm back and today I will try to make some benzaldehyde through the sunlight reaction. I tried to make benzyl chloride a few weeks ago. But it didn't go so well, and now I'm left with some fairly impure benzyl chloride that's just not worth purifying it. This should work fine. I also bought some hexamine a year ago. Although they claim that it is pure, it is not. Pure hexamine should burn without residue. Mine does that. It also smells like fish, so I should probably recrystallize it. But for this reaction it should actually work. Now, how does the sunlight reaction work? It is actually very simple. The benzyl chloride reacts with the hexamine, producing this quaternary ammonium salt. This then undergoes an acid-catalyzed hydrolysis reaction to produce the aldehyde. I'm using a modified synthesis from Organic Synthesis, 1950, Volume 30, page 67, in which they made naphtaldehyde from chloromethylnephthalene. I started by measuring how much benzyl chloride I had. The benzyl chloride was put back into the flask and a 50% acetic acid solution was added. Next the hexamine was added. A reflux condenser was attached and the solution was refluxed for 2 hours. After about 10 minutes the mixture became homogeneous and slightly yellow. When the reflux was finished hydrochloric acid was added to hydrolyze the compound. And that's where I noticed the huge mistake I made. The flask was not big enough to safely hold everything. So I did something fairly stupid, which is overfilling it. The moment the acid was added, white smoke appeared. I think it is possible that this is ammonium chloride, but I don't know for sure. After this was refluxing for further 30 minutes, it was left to cool down overnight. The next day two phases separated, and it was strongly smelling like cherries. The solution was cloudy and white sediment was floating around. A vacuum filtration was set up and a paper filter was used. This didn't work so well, so the paper filter was discarded. After this the glass filter was clogged immediately. The pressure went from 10% vacuum to 90% vacuum, but it still worked. Because benzaldehyde is slightly soluble in water, I decided to do a solvent extraction. And that's where I messed up. The ideal solvent for this would be diethyl ether. I didn't have ether at the time, so I decided to just use dichloromethane. It was very difficult to get the benzaldehyde into the DCM layer, and I'm not sure if I got everything. It would have been smarter to just use no solvent at all. Next, the organic layer was separated and washed with a saturated sodium chloride solution. It was then dried with anhydrous magnesium sulfate. The organic layer was smelling very intensely like cherries and it smelled closely also like bitter almonds. Next it was vacuum filtered again and set up on a hot plate with a tube blowing in air. 
This got rid of the DCM very fast and the yellow oil was left in the flask. A distillation with a simple air condenser was set up and the oil was distilled. After about 20 minutes, the first vapor started condensing at around 171C, which is very close to the 179C boiling point of benzaldehyde. The distillate was collected up to 195C and the distillation was stopped. 4 milliliters of a very intense smelling colorless liquid was collected. Because benzaldehyde reacts with air, it was stored in an ampule. A simple gas torch was used to seal it. And now, here we have it. The yield is 31%, which if you take in consideration that the chemicals were impure, that I overfilled the flask, and that I used the solvent extraction where no one was needed, is actually not that bad. I don't know what I want to make with it, but I think I will either turn it into cinnamic acid or cinnamaldehyde. I hope you liked this video, bye.